Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Welcome if you are new. I'm Stacy, and today we're going to be watercoloring in this uh, seahorse. That's what it is. <laughs> um, I have out my mostly M Grand palette. I have a little bit of white gouache here, some Arteza uh, indigo. I think that's it that's in here that's weird. There might be another Arteza or Sennelier color in here, but mostly they're on grams. At any rate, this is going to be all changed and refreshed um, soon. We'll have a little video of me doing all that. I need to revamp. I've touched bottom in almost all my colors. It's getting frustrating. And then over here I have my uh, Daniel Smith and Core colors. This is all my Daniel Smith and Core colors. I decided to go ahead and put them in all in one palette uh, and I have one Sennelier indigo in there because I wanted my two indigos together. Was it two? And then this Mayan blue acts very much like an indigo as well. At any rate, we're going to play with watercolor today. We're going to start by, this is Arches uh, Rough, here I'll grab it, <coughs> ooh, my water bottle. This is Arches. 140 pound rough watercolor paper. I went crazy about a year ago and bought myself a bunch of paper to try and I have yet to use the rough paper. So I figured we'd give it a whirl and see what kind of effect we can get um, with watercolor. See what the textures do. I'm going to go ahead and spritz. Spritz till it's shiny. Are we shiny? We're shiny. And I'll just spread the spritz like so. I might put some metallic um, on this guy too. I'm seeing a little bit of metallic touches on him when I'm when we get towards the end. Let's see how that goes. I'm thinking bronze maybe. I have a really pretty copper as well. Copper might be better. Okay, let's do, let's do, let's do one of our core colors. I do like this, oh, I actually like this Daniel Smith color. I want this to be whimsical and pretty and light. So that is what we're going for today. Some of this color here and there. And this color is Rose of Ultramarine. And if you look real close, you can see that it, it separates and it's so pretty. I love what it does when it separates and on the paper and, and dries. So I'm going to let it do its thing and get all pink purple. Pink purple, it's got a little blue stuff going on. I think it's really gorgeous. All right, let's do, I wish I, wish I had a bigger, um, I like the larger pans better because I tend to um, really like to dig in there and get a lot of color and it's hard to do with this little brush or with this big fat brush in the tiny space and I don't mind this bleeding onto him at all not even a little bit it's going to dry a lot lighter than it looks right now for maybe little spots like that. That's, my table's at a tilt, so the bottom of this paper is super wet. Just blot a little. Nothing like a little blotting. There we go. And then... Now before you splatter any paint around, make sure your expensive devices are covered up or moved out of the way. I have gotten ink um, the indigo ink on my screen and it took a hot minute to get it off of there 
um, kind of disappointing. I'm just dropping water in. Get a few pretty backgrounds going on. And maybe a couple dark spots. There we go. Alright, I think I'm done messing with that for now. Whoop, almost forgot the shadowy bits. There we go. How's it looking? Oh, I'll scooch it back up in the frame. <laughs> That'd be ideal. I, I think because I really want all those textures, I'm going to pick it up and show you guys here in a second. This paper and that paint is making some really um, beautiful textures up here, which I love. And they'll be even more visible if you let it dry naturally. Um, they'll settle in and... The, sediment, the sedimentary nature of the color is going to show up really nicely. Alright, moving on. We're going to wash this guy. I forget to wash my big brush thoroughly. And I carry paint from painting to painting. We have a turtle painting to do later, so... I need this big guy. Okay. And these are my Princeton Neptunes, as always. My um, number 18 round and my number 8 round. My favorite, favorite brushes. I know there are other fabulous brushes out there. These are just my favorites. I'm going to go in with some, I think a little bit of Azo Orange just to, do I want to do that? I think I kind of like the Chinese Orange better. It's a little more brown. And I'd like to drop that in and let it... Spread about. And touch, touch, touch. Oh, I'm sorry about that. There's um, the windows open, so there might be a little bit of um, road noise here and there. Hope you guys don't mind the nature of the beast right now because it's still warm 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 here I'm um, not terrible but enough that closing the windows is not an option I love watercolor so much you can see like through the color to your drawing so nicely so that you don't lose track of where you're at and I love the layering effect that you can put layer over layer over layer. If you don't fuss too much and you have pretty decent paper, you can um, do quite a few layers of watercolor before things get, you know, muddy. You don't want it to get muddy. Like the whole attraction to watercolor for me is how um, vibrant it can be. And this is going to be a real-time video. I'm not feeling, I'm not really feeling like editing or um, putting some color there. Might go back in a little bit of purple a million little later. Okay, I think I'd like some yellow in here, but maybe this cad yellow. Because it's nice and um, bright. Yeah, there we go. A little bit of cad yellow in there. Let that bleed around and mix on the paper. A little more water. Just drop it on. That's oh, pretty. I dig it. That's a nice yellow. It's um, 
De La Rowney. These four colors in this little spot right here are De La Rowney colors. I got them in one of my art boxes. And I didn't know what to do with them, so I threw them in with the core and the... Um, Ooh, that's pretty. Oh, I like the colors together. That looks nice. Um, just a little touch of it here, here, there. I like how it's bleeding out into the background too. Once it dries, I'm going to let it dry, and then I'm going to go back over it and pull the details out. That is um, my preferred way to do watercolor paintings. And then I got out my Copic White, and then I have this liquid white colored pencil that came in an art box that I thought we could try for, like, details, because there's white on him as well, and then I thought maybe, for fun, we might do touches of uh, the copper on top. I thought that'd be pretty. Okay, I'm gonna snag a little bit of this. There we go. Get a little too. Just a little too orange right there. Put it out. Do I like it? Wait, oh, do. You know what would help? Mm. Yep. Glasses. Oh, jeez, nice. There we go. I think a little more of the Chinese orange, and this is a Sennelier color, you guys, just so you know. I think it kind of looks a little bit like a dragon, which is cool. Maybe by the time we're done he'll be even more dragon-like. That would be neat. Alright. Let's mop up a little bit of that. There we go. And his little, um, I don't know what you call these little pointy things that come off the ends of him, but to me, they look like tree branches, which is, or antlers, like crazy antlers. Which is super cool. There we go. I think I'm going to stop fussing because I really, really want to drop in more color. But if I keep dropping in color wet on wet, it's all going to see how it's bleeding into one another. And for the most part, I don't mind. Yeah, this is almost dry already. You guys want to see up close? Can you see the textures? All those crazy textures. I think it's so pretty. I mean, we might go over it a little bit with an, another color to soften like some of the outside edges. If he doesn't pop out of there <coughs> enough for my taste once we get in there to do the details. I think I might take the heat tool to it and see what happens. I just don't want to lose this. And sometimes when you take the heat tool to sedimentary colors, um, the colors get more even and blend together a little bit because you're forcing them to dry really fast. But I think we're dry enough ooh, that that shouldn't happen. So let's, I'm gonna pause and then we will, I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing on his little self. Now I'm not gonna work as wet now. I'm gonna um, be a little less aggressive and uh, 
in here and put in some, some details. that looking? Hmm. Well, it's textured like I wanted it to be, so that's cool. I think I picked the wrong color though. It's too little less dark. There we go. A little more red tint to it. Too wet. That's okay. There we go. And on his back right here, you can kind of see a little bit of the behind him. Like there's this row of little nubbly bumps, and then. You can see the ones um, behind just a little bit. There's a, just a little flavor in there. The brush is almost dry. I'm just kind of raking color across the textures of the paper. Almost forgot it was a textured paper. If you're working on a textured paper, take advantage of that and let let the paper do some of the work for you. A little bit of dry brush technique is uh, is a really nice effect. Looks like actually super nice for this kind of creature. There we go. I'm taking it. Okay, let's get a little more of that color. those folds. He's got kind of a lot of folds very right in here. That wrestling paper is um, some of the tracings I have uh, hanging on my whiteboard over there. How's he looking? Oh, he's kind of coming together nicely. Okay, take it. thinking about this piece for a couple of days and really wanting, like in my brain, <clears throat> I could visualize how I want it to look. The challenge is um, getting it from, from the brain to the paper and being satisfied with how it came, comes out. Ah, that's always been a challenge for me. Just 
little tree barb things going on. Texture color there. And there's always this phase in a painting, this one right here, where everything looks the same and it's kind of blending together and I feel like it should be more finished by now and why isn't it more finished by now? If you're feeling that way, just maybe chill. Take a break from it. Uh, I just started painting tonight though and I've been thinking about doing this piece all during my work day. So, I'm not going to stop, but... If you are feeling that way, taking a teensy break, if you want to get in a cup of coffee or um, maybe my arm like resting right on the paint palette, you know, watch a half an hour show, get out of your head for a minute and come back to it and you will see a vast difference in how you feel about it. kind of stopped looking at my reference photo, which I will put the link to. Um, in the description below, you guys, if you want to pull it up uh, and give it a whirl. Um, I'm kind of doing my own thing at this point, because I have an idea of what I want it to look like in the head. And if you keep looking at your reference photo, those effects kind of just, uh, and the idea might go away a little bit. So maybe, maybe, maybe. Take a pause from looking at the photo, look at your painting, look at your photo, look at your painting. And, uh, Go a little free and wild on it. I really want them to feel super textured, so the brush is pretty dry. You can see it's pretty folded up and and uh, oh, there you go and wispy, so I can get some different little effects. Another way to go is um, sea sea sponges if you've got them. You can get some cool effects with those as well. Maybe not on this texture of a paper, but um, definitely worth a shot, right? for you. And maybe not quite that crazy. Maybe it's that crazy. Yeah, 
Yeah, that brightens them right up. Dig it. Alright, let me go in there. Right here. I kind of like the way that's looking. There we go. And this is mostly, I have fans on in here too. Not the ceiling fans on, the windows open. That's super hot, so. I mean, it's not super hot, it's like 80 degrees, but to me that's too hot. Anybody else out there like the, uh, the fall weather. I'm aching for fall weather. I'm ready to wear my sweaters and drink warm drinks without feeling like I'm melting. <laughs> and uh, my favorite, favorite part of uh, the changing of any season really. Uh, spring and, and fall are my favorite seasons. Fall is my beyond favorite though. It's the one, you guys. Fall's the one. And, um, I love all the vibrant color. And everything adjusts from, from, uh, greens and summer tones. And slams into fall and all of its vibrancy. And in Washington State, um, the rivers are running pretty nicely right now. So there's a, a drive, Highway 2, brings you up into the mountains. Um, it's a gorgeous drive. If anyone's in Washington, I recommend the drive. There are plenty of uh, places to stop and hike and um, pull out and just take pictures and watch the water and see the, the beautiful colors on the trees. It, it's just gorgeous. I miss it kind of a lot right now. I've been missing Washington kind of deeply for the last several months since I went and saw my kids. It's calling to me, y'all. It's calling to me. Um, okay. I think I liked a little bit of um, this. Oh, oh, yeah. That's too purpley right there. I think that's the wrong color. I'm going to clean that spot up. That's one of the purples that's in the palette. It's not the color I want. I want this um, Rose of Ultramarine. Which I guess looks pretty purpley on the palette. Okay. Nice and wet. And uh, kind of drop it because these, these, this fin, I think it's a fin. I mean, it looks like it might be a fin in the reference photo. I mean, I, the computer went blank, so I'm, I'm not looking at it right now, but yeah. Be a little purple through here. And then for these background ones, I might drop in a little more some of the purpley stuff too. Why not? Yeah, it's giving them some really cool texture. I hope it dries nice. Kind of digging how it looks. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm digging that. Okay, cool. Let's put a little bit up here. And right here. Okay, maybe a little, a little darker. Okay, you know, and I think I want some of these guys as well. Because they feel very branch-like. And I'm kind of digging that. What's that? Yeah? He's kind of cool looking. Alright. I'm digging him. I think the final touches are going to really make him pop. Because I really don't want to mess with that background. I'm kind of digging it. I mean, it might be too busy. I'm kind of digging it though. Maybe we'll, I don't know. We'll wait until we're done with him and then we'll decide. Let's get in here with some really, um, yeah, I think it's time for a finish touches on him. I don't want to mess too much with, I really want to put some of this color. I need a little, they're right in front of your face, Stacey. Come on, get it together. A little bit of copper. That is what this is, right? Yeah. Iridescent rich copper. This is Liquitex um, acrylic ink. So it will dry permanent and be like light fast and all that. It's not going to ever go anywhere. And all my, all my paints are light fast as well for the most part. I try not to create pieces that are gonna, that if I do sell them, the original, at some point, um, it is an actual archival piece. Okay. What about that? Let's see how this looks. on this crown part of his head, like that. Kind of blends in a bit, doesn't it? Um, maybe, I really don't want to do silver. Kind of ants out of gold. Maybe if we mix it together. Or perhaps I should just do the white because it'll stand out. Also Liquitex. This is the iridescent bright gold. Backward goes. Try to put stuff backward goes because I'm a disaster, you guys. Let's face it. I leave stuff everywhere. I make a huge mess. Oh, there we go. That's that's kind of what I was looking for.
paint's still pretty wet, so just let it be what it is. How's that look? Can you guys even see that? I'll show you a close up. Because I can see it glowing. Um, and it's not the only color I'm going to use for accents. I'm going to use some of the white as well. The whole thing, just parts of it. There we go. Okay. And then, I think I'm going to copy white. It's so messy. I hope this doesn't get everywhere. Alright, let's set it down here. Mostly dry brush. Just the tip. Using it like in a solid mass and kind of dragging it across the texture of the paper. Um,
I think we might be having to go messing with the uh, Copic ink. back on that before I dump it. Spill it everywhere as I am prone to do. Big tire metal thing up there. <laughs> oh lord. Alright. Now we're going to make him a little bit more. Just a little bit more. This is just like my muddy mixture of blues that I have on my palette. <clears throat> Got a bunch of blues and purples and pre-mixed mud on my on my palette. It's fairly sticky.
Anybody out there thinking, stop, you're ruining it. <laughs> this is about the time that I do start ruining the painting and I should maybe step back and assess. I think for right now I'm doing all right. Doing okay. I think maybe I should stop pulsing. <coughs> what do you guys think? Stop pulling my head. I think stop pulling my head. <coughs> yeah, I'm digging it like a lot. I didn't think I was going to like this much. <laughs> it's always nice when you like a piece when it's all done, right? Let's see. Let's I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Oop, that's in. Out a little bit. There's the whole piece. And it's glory. Do, do, do. Well, I really like it. Stop shaking. It's rude. Okay. kind of really, really like it, you guys. Look at him. Up close and personal. This little spot I'm not digging. Let's fix that. Because when I look at it later, I'll look at that and I'll be like, what happened? Why? Maybe... A squish of the purple? Yes. Did it fix that issue or no? <laughs> Pardon me. I don't think it did. It did not. I just kind of covered it up. Oh no. I'll leave it alone. I'll leave it alone. Alright. What do you guys think? Did he turn out cool or what? I think he turned out pretty cool. I'm very satisfied. I even like the busy background. And I normally, with a, such a busy character, uh, or piece, or critter, or whatever, I don't really like a busy background because I want them to pop off the page and really, you know, be the star of the show. But I think for tonight that uh, this is this is it. This is the one. Well done. Yay. Well, thank you so much for watching. If you stuck around, I appreciate it. Give the channel, the video, a thumbs up. Subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.